This is the Minister's Crucible. I'm Fred Rochester. Thanks for listening. Uh, we want to talk about how to expose false prophets. It's very important that we discuss this on a regular basis because these are the end times. It's necessary because there is a lot of people that are deceived by these individuals. In fact, when you go on the internet, you will find that, that these places are crowded to hear false teaching and false prophets. And it's for a reason. It is an end time sign. People will not want to endure sound doctrine. And so that's what uh, Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through 5. They, he gave Timothy a charge that he is to preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure a sound doctrine, but will heap up for themselves teachers having itching ears. And uh, by their own desires, they will uh, uh, crop up teachers because they have ears that want to be tickled. And they will turn themselves away from the truth and be turned to fables. And so we have to uh, preach regularly the word of the living God because Jesus is soon to come and it is an end time sign. A lot of people are defecting from the faith as it is said in the book of 1 Timothy uh, chapter 4 and verse 1 that the spirit expressly says that in the latter days some will depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron so we have to be very careful to warn the people of god about these individuals it's nothing new they've been around for centuries and so we have to constantly and continuously teach people uh, those who are true believers in the lord how to detect and discern these individuals and not be persuaded by them, not to be swayed by them, but to identify them and to call them out. Uh, let's go in our Bibles to the book of uh, Matthew chapter 24, beginning at verse one, because uh, we need to see the whole gist of the scriptures in regards to what is to occur in the last days. Verse one, then Jesus went out and departed from the temple and the disciples came and showed him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you that, um, uh, assuredly, I say to you, you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. And that's very important and critical. Take heed that no one deceives you for many will come in my name saying, I am Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass, must come to pass. But the end is not yet for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then, and this is the verse that we need to uh, uh, concentrate on, and read past it and, and then come back to it. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Go back up to verse 11. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. 
Now, when we study the fact about the false prophets, we will see that these individuals are only about one thing. They will only concentrate on one thing, which we will see in the scriptures in a moment. Now, uh, false prophets will burn in hell. There's no question about it. They will be destroyed and sent to, to the uh, place where judgment it has been made upon their lives because they refuse to repent. Now, I want to point out to you that when it comes to uh, false prophets and false teachers, you have to remember that they have no fear of God within them because why would you deceive people uh, and, and you talk about the Lord all the time? They have no fear of God. They're not even afraid of him. And that's why they do what they do, because if they were truly afraid of God, they would never speak in his name and deceive people the way that they're doing it today. So let's go through the scriptures and uh, determine what's happening with these false prophets. Now, when those that prophesy and miss it, they didn't make a mistake. They lied. What if they keep doing it? Well, they're prophet liars. Unless they repent and never prophesy lies again, they shall all likewise perish. Now, when we go into the book of Deuteronomy, some will argue that it's Old Testament. We don't have to refer to these scriptures. But no, this is Old Testament, yes, written in the Old Testament, in fact, in the law of Moses. But the gist of it is the same today, because you will see that when we get to Second uh, Peter uh, chapters 2 and 3, you will find that the same rule applies and the same measure of destruction applies not only from what we read in the book of Deuteronomy, but also in the book of Second uh, Peter chapter 2 and chapter 3. So let's go to Deuteronomy 13. Deuteronomy 13, beginning at verse 1, and it says, If there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder comes to pass, of which he spoke to you, saying, Let us go after other gods, which you have not known, and let us serve them, you shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. You shall serve him and hold fast to him. But that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken in order to turn you away from the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of bondage to entice you from the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. So you shall put away the evil from your midst. So that's the rule of false prophets and teachers. They will be destroyed. Now, one of the things that we have to understand is that you should never uh, completely give yourself to these individuals. And the way that you identify whether or not these individuals are of God is that you go back to the word of God and confirm what was said based on what God said in his word. Because if you look at uh, verse 4, uh, the Lord says, You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. You shall serve him and hold fast to him. So when all else fails, you go back to the, to the Lord, you go back to the commandments, you go back to the scriptures, and you hold fast to the Lord. And that's very important that uh, we point that out. Now, go. we're going to go now into Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter, beginning at verse 20. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of the of other gods, that prophet shall die. And if I say in your and if you say in your heart, 
How shall we know the word which the Lord has has not? Uh, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or comes to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously or arrogantly. You shall not be afraid of him. And that's key and critical because we have a lot of false prophets and teachers today that are arrogant with, with pride. You, all you have to do is search the internet and look at the individuals that speak with arrogance and with pride in their heart, commanding things to be done and they're not done. For instance, Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, uh, just to name a couple and uh, Paula White and uh, uh, we, we go down the, the list, but you know who they are. Some of them, but some of you may not, you may not be aware of who they are, but they have arrogance and pride. And so we have to realize that those are the telltale signs of false prophets based on, based on what we just read in the, in the first, in just two places of scripture in the book of Deuteronomy. Again, verse Deuteronomy 13 verses one through five and Deuteronomy 18 verses 20 through 20, 20 and 22. Now let's get an example of a false prophet. Uh, if we go into the book of Jeremiah chapter 28 and uh, verse one, we're going to read the entire passage because you need to see the whole story here. And it happened in the same year at the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year and in the fifth month that Hananiah, the son of Azur, the prophet, who was among Gibeon, spoke to me in the house of the Lord in the presence of the priests and of all the people, saying, Thus speaks the Lord of hosts. Now you got to be very careful. Let me point something out to you. When you hear a thus saith the Lord, that person better be speaking for the Lord and it better be accurate because if it's inaccurate, according to the Old Testament, they're, they're subject to death. But also, if you were to go into the book of Second Peter, uh, chapter two and chapter three, you will find that these individuals that uh, spoke uh, that speak prophetically and it failed, they are subject to be destroyed. Now, verse two, thus speaks the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon within two full years. I will bring back to to I will bring back to this place all the vessels of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried to Babylon. And I will bring back to this place. Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, with all the captives of Judah who went to Babylon, says the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and in the presence of all the people who stood in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. <laughs> the Lord do so. The Lord perform your words, which you have prophesied to bring back the vessels of the Lord's house and all who were carried away captive from Babylon to this place. Nevertheless, hear now this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people, the prophets who have before me and before you of old prophesied against many countries and great kingdoms of war and disaster and pestilence. As for the prophet who prophesies of peace, when the word of the, of the prophet comes to pass, the prophet will be known as, as one whom the Lord has truly sent. In other words, you will see what's happening here. There's a challenge that's happening here, a challenge between one prophet and another. In verse 10 now, then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and broke it. And Hananiah spoke in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus says the Lord, Even so I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all nations within the space of two full years. He's sticking true to his, to his prophecy, sticking to his guns, as we would say. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. 
Now the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah after Hananiah the prophet had broken the yoke from the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Go and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, You have broken the yokes of wood, but you have made in their places yokes of iron. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron on the neck of all these nations, that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. I have given him the beasts of the field also. Now, let me point something out to you. This prophet Hannah and I said that two years, God's going to bring the children of Israel back. Well, you have to go back and read where the prophet of the Lord, Jeremiah, told uh, the nation of Israel that the Lord has sent Israel from Jerusalem to Babylon for 70 years. And that's in the book of Jeremiah, the 25th chapter, beginning at verse one. The story starts there. The word came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, which was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, which Jeremiah, the prophet, spoke to all the people of Judah and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, From the thirteenth year of, Zo of Josiah, the king of Ammon, king of Judah, even to this day, this is the twenty-third year in which the word of the Lord has come to me. And I have spoken to you, rising early and speaking, but you have not listened. And the Lord has sent to you all his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them. But you have not listened nor inclined your ear to hear. They said, Repent now every one of his evil way and his evil doings and dwell in the land that the Lord has given to you and your fathers forever and ever. Do not go after other gods to serve them and worship them, and do not provoke me to anger with the works of your hands, and I will not harm you. Yet you have not listened to me, says the Lord, you, that you might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, because you have not heard my words, behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, says the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land, against its inhabitants, and against these nations all around, and will utterly destroy them, and make them an astonishment, a hissing, and perpetual desolations. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth, and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride, the sound of the millstones, and the light of the lamp. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon seventy seven zero years. So it is clear that when the Lord gave this word that is going to be seven years, seventy years, excuse me, and not two years. So when we go back to the twentieth chapter of the book of Jeremiah, we will see that this person, this false prophet, took the yoke off of Jeremiah's neck and broke it, and then the Lord gave a word to Jeremiah and turned and turned him back. So now we see back in Jeremiah chapter 28, uh, verse 14 again, For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron on the neck of all these nations, that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, and they shall serve him as I have given him the beasts of the field also. Then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, which is what we read in the book of Deuteronomy chapters uh, 13 and 18. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will cast you from the face of the earth. This year you shall die because you have taught rebellion against the Lord. So Hananiah the, uh, so Hananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. So here we see the fulfillment of God's own word way back 
uh, when the children of Israel came out of the land of Egypt and were instructed about prophets and dreamers and sorcerers and, and soothsayers and magicians and things of that nature. Uh, here we see the Lord fulfilling his own word from the book of De uh, De uh, Deuteronomy, uh, the 18th chapter. And so it's very important and it's critical that we understand that God is very serious when it comes to false prophets. And we have to be uh, of discerning of this because if we're not discerning of this, then we're going to fall into the same trap. We're going to do the same thing that these individuals have done. And what's going to happen as a result is that people are going to be deceived. And that's why it's very important that we uh, uh, come back to the scriptures and stay with the scriptures and not trust in false prophets. It's very important that we do this because what's at stake is that people's hearts and minds are deceptive, are, are, are being deceived. Uh, just like what it says in the book of 2 uh, Timothy, where, where Paul said to Timothy that evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. So deception is on a high scale in the time that we're living in and it is our job to teach the people the correct way of to look for false prophets identify them call them out and warn the people against them you've been listening to the minister's crucible i'm fred rochester thanks for listening